Good day, everyone. Welcome to the Thursday morning devotion of Clontarf Beach Baptist Church. My name is PJ. Thanks for joining us. Before I start, I just wanted to say how great it was to see Pastor Cam here on Facebook devotion yesterday. I haven't been able to connect with, with Cam yet, so it was amazing to see him uh, recovering so well. Uh, let's all keep praying for Pastor Cam's quick and full recovery, and also for a blessing for Anita and the whole family too. Alright, for today's devotion, I'll be continuing my series on discipleship. Last Thursday, I talked about how as disciples of Jesus, we always aim to challenge other people to get to know or discover Jesus for themselves personally, so that they too might experience eternal life with Christ and become Jesus' faithful disciples. Now, I've been using this diagram to better illustrate um, the usual relationships or conversation flow we try to have with people as we aim to bring them closer to Jesus. It goes from having just casual conversations with people to more meaningful talks and then to spiritual topics in the hope that we can challenge them to personally discover Jesus for themselves. So that's a challenge or discovery part. Now for some, for some people that may mean getting to know Jesus for the first time to help them start a relationship with Christ. Or for others, it is uh, more of to help them get to know Jesus more such that they would grow in, faith, in, in their faith to the point that they too will in turn be able to help other people become Jesus' disciples also. Now, regarding that, regarding this uh, discovery and challenges, or discovery and challenge part, I just wanted to clarify that uh, this doesn't necessarily end when people come to faith in Jesus. Of course, for those who do not know Jesus yet, that is one of our biggest goals. And that is an amazing thing, you know, helping a person come to faith in Christ to begin their eternal life with Jesus, I believe is one of the greatest things we can do for a person. But of course, we do not want to end our relationships there. Rather, as already mentioned, we also want to help people grow in their own discipleship journey such that they too learn to help others become Jesus' disciples also. So we want to be able to support or even mentor our fellow disciples as God leads us and enables us to do so. So in line with that for this morning, I wanted to share with you something that helped me a lot when I was a new Christian myself. And maybe this will be helpful to you also as you help support or mentor those who Jesus has called you to lead. Or if you yourself are discouraged or have doubts regarding the status of your salvation, like maybe if you are questioning if you are actually saved or not, I believe these truths from the Bible will be encouraging for you. You see, one of the biggest temptations that the devil throws at new Christians, especially those who fall into sin shortly after they have come to faith in Christ, is to doubt their salvation. A lot of new believers struggle and may be discouraged or because they may feel like, oh, I still keep on sinning. Maybe I'm, I'm not worthy of heaven or maybe I'm not saved yet. Or maybe I'm not yet fit to be a disciple or a follower of Jesus. But that doesn't make any sense at all. If Jesus died for us while we were still sinners, you know, people who didn't like him or who just ignored him completely, how much more will Jesus keep us safe now that we have chosen to trust in Him and, and now that we want to live for Him? That's despite of our occasional or maybe even fairly regular fall into temptation. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, so I'll, let me read just um, parts of Romans chapter 5. I'll, I'll read verses 1 to 2 first. So it says here in Romans chapter 5, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, note it is not by what we can or cannot do that we are saved from sin. 
but by faith alone, it says. It says, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace which we now stand. Note also that grace, by definition, is something that is given freely and not earned, merited, or deserved. So again, it doesn't depend on what we can and cannot do. And it continues in verse 6. You see, just at the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. And then in verse 8, But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by His blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through Him? For if while we were God's enemies, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son how much more will how much more having been reconciled shall we be saved through his life so again if jesus died for us while we were still sinners who didn't like him who were his enemies or who just simply ignored him how much more will jesus keep us safe now that we want to trust in him and want to live for him Again, despite of our occasional falls into temptation. Our security for eternal life is based on what Jesus has done for you and me, and not on what we can do or cannot do for Him. So, when a new Christian you are helping gets discouraged, or if you yourself are doubting your salvation, just go back to Jesus and His promises. The person you're helping or you yourself will know personally whether you want to genuinely entrust your life to Jesus or not. If you want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, or if the person you are helping expresses that desire, then remind them or yourself that that is all that God is looking for regarding salvation. Faith in Jesus alone. And God gives you eternal life. It's a free gift of grace, unmerited and undeserved by any of us. Of course, I'm not saying that once you are saved, it is now okay to sin. Of course not. Because if you genuinely trust and believe in Jesus, you would no longer want to continue in sin anymore. That is what making Jesus your Lord actually means, after all, you want to surrender your life to Jesus. And that is also what the Holy Spirit helps us to do. The Spirit changes our hearts so that we begin to sin less and less by wanting to agree and do what Jesus asks of us. But again, our salvation is not dependent on whether we sin or not. It depends only on what Jesus has accomplished for us through His death and resurrection, His payment of our debt to God, which we can avail of through faith in Jesus Christ alone. Now, if ever you or the person you are helping does fall into sin, and we all fall into sin from time to time, then just to remind them of, of what the Bible says in 1 John 1 9. Now let me try and put that up on screen. So 1 John 1 9 says that if we confess our sins, that is that is if we admit to God that we are wrong, and so we now want to change our life and be in line with Him, God says that He is faithful and just, and He will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Now that purification mentioned there doesn't just mean that God will forget our sins and now we're off the hook. Rather, purification also means that God will help us get rid of whatever sin it is in our lives that we are struggling with. See, God won't leave us in sin. Instead, the Holy Spirit will help us to overcome sin always. 
That's part of what the Holy Spirit does. He helps us to overcome sin and the Holy Spirit will help us to do exactly what Jesus wants us to do. And again, this is why Christians begin to sin less and less. And it is also how we become faithful followers or disciples of Jesus Christ. We can only follow in Jesus' footsteps as we surrender and cooperate with the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So God himself is purifying us from sin. So as soon as we surrender our life to Christ, the process of life change begins. And the more we cooperate with God in this matter, by surrendering to the Spirit daily, of course that is progressively moving forward, keeping in step, walking with the Spirit, the sooner we become more Christ-like each day. And the sooner we are able to be disciples of Jesus or live out how it is to be a disciple of Jesus. All right, um, that's all that I wanted to share for this morning. I hope that these truths from God's Word uh, reminds you or helps you um, with regard to your own uh, journey of discipleship, but also um, as you may be helping someone to grow in their discipleship uh, walk. All right, as we close, let me just uh, pray for all of us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your word. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you died on the cross to pay for our sins and that we have salvation, we have forgiveness of sins, not because of what we can do or what we can't do, but because of what you've done for us. Thank you for giving us eternal life. And this is why we want to surrender ourselves completely to you, Lord Jesus. We trust in you. We trust that what you want for us is the best for us. It's what is good for us and also the people around us. But help us every day to surrender because sometimes it's difficult. But we thank you that you are working uh, in our hearts, in our minds. You're working to change us. Help us to cooperate with you. Help us to surrender to you that we might be able to accomplish your will. Encourage us every day, O Holy Spirit, and also lead us and empower us um, to be the good disciples that you want us to be, so that we might be able to help other people get to know you also. Thank you again, God, for today. All these things we pray to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you again for joining us, everybody. Uh, one more devotion for tomorrow by Dan, so on Friday. And then on the weekend, there are the Sunday um, services, 9.30 a.m. in the morning and 6 p.m. in the afternoon. All right, see you. God bless.